Hi everyone, uh, my name is James. Uh, some of you may know me over here. I spoke at Hackware yesterday. Every year I try to give like at least one talk in Singapore. Uh, I currently work in the United States for the last like six years. Um, currently I'm at Roblox, which is, well, it's like a game platform, but you know, you don't really compete with JavaScript, but it's a game platform where you build games and you play games and there's like a micropayment system. And many kids actually build games using Lua, Lua script. Yeah, um, this, uh, this is Jerry. He works in Singapore um, and he's, Sorry? Uh, no, we'll carry on. I'm trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Worries. we have a demo that actually uh, uses the, the online stuff. Yeah, yeah, so this is actually a project that um, started off a few years ago. I decided that I would rather like, you know, like, uh, release it as soon as I can. I have to make a commitment to release it. Otherwise, it will sit at the bottom of your project's bin for eternity. Um, yeah, so what is this? Snapcache is basically an open source alternative to Firebase. So how many of you actually use Firebase over here? Oh, nice, quite a few of you. I was worried that no one would understand what on earth I'm doing, right? Um, so I used Firebase many years ago, ever since they were a startup. Um, you know, they were at some hackathons and they were probably the first real-time database um, before Parse came out. I'm not so sure which came first. Um, after that, Firebase was bought by Google and they, were, they are now part of Google Cloud. Um, in my previous company, we actually used Firebase in production, so um, we have quite a bit of experience with it. Yeah, yeah so yeah, there are other, um, sorry, there are, there's two other people on my team, uh, Frank and Xiaorong. Uh, Xiaorong couldn't be here today, he had uh, national service commitments. Um, yeah, so history, right? Uh, Firebase is on Google Cloud, and the story is like this, right? Like, usually I wouldn't rewrite something that already exists, but when we were running, um, using Firebase in production, uh, what happens is that Friday evening, I'm not sure who in Google decided to push and update their service and it broke our you know, uh, service with like 10,000 users using it, right? So naturally being one of the few backend people on the team, we had to like hack out some fix. And we fixed it over the weekend and on Monday morning, they reverted whatever they changed on Friday. So it broke again. <laughs> So, you know, naturally, like, uh, the, our higher-ups were very happy, and it's not really our fault, but, okay, we just decided, okay, it's time to DIY, and we want to in-house this core component. Why? Because Firebase is like a real-time uh, database, a real-time communication system that we use it to support our application. Um, so, the key components are essentially Redis and Snapcache. Um, how we started off as, um, how we started off doing this is primarily when we were looking around for, um, Firebase made backend source code, which it doesn't exist. But however, um, there was a repository created by an ex Firebase engineer, which created like a, a stub, a stub, uh, how would I say, a stub library, which allows you to test um, Firebase offline. Um, however, it, did, it doesn't have persistence and it doesn't scale. It's really just for you to do like a test, a part of a test driver or something. Um, and for our architecture, um, the current architecture, um, you usually use Firebase as part of Google Cloud. You know, typically, you have your app, you have a Firebase SDK, you could use the JavaScript SDK or the Java SDK. The SDK is uh, really efficient at communicating with the backend because it uses web sockets, you know, not your REST HTTP stuff. Um, and when we wrote our own Firebase uh, backend, we essentially want to replace it. So what, what do we do? We actually have a Node.js server, which runs Snapcache. We are able to reuse the WebSocket protocol. In the past, when um, it was closed source, the WebSocket protocol was kind of like obfuscated, but after they open source the SDK, uh, understanding the protocol was much easier. Um, we use Redis as the backend persistent storage, primarily because we are able to scale. I'll explain more about scaling later. Um, setting this up is really easy. Um, I just like released it publicly earlier today. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, you just need to start your Redis, um, start up the Snapcache instance, right? You can run multiple, but over here, let's assume you run one. Um, Jerry will give a demo later um, with the demo application. Um, so it's just really just these two components, right? One of the key differences, if you have used Firebase before, you would have known this thing called the permissions setting, um, the permissions, uh, what do you call it? The rules. Yeah, the rules. Rules basically define yeah. which child, which node in your Firebase database is a particular um, connection able to read or write or both. Um, on Snapcache, you wouldn't, you don't, we don't have any like nice user interface, so you actually modify um, part of the JavaScript on the server side. 
So how do we scale? Um, we actually use this in production in my previous company. We have like 10,000 concurrent users. Um, we simply add more, add more nodes to the Redis cluster um, and we have just launched more instances. Snapcash is designed to scale horizontally, which means that you just add more instances to it um, as you scale. We are primarily bound by the number of nodes, um, the number of subscription because Firebase, you, know, you are able to like uh, subscribe to a particular data node and when there are changes on it, your client will receive those changes. The number of subscribed nodes and the Redis uh, write throughput because uh, Redis is like single trailer and you can only like, um, how would I say, have like only one instance in the Redis cluster would be the master of all the writes going to it. Yeah, so our production architecture is not too complicated. We simply horizontally scale the Snapcache instances, which is just more Node.js instances of it. Um, and for Redis, we just add more um, nodes to the cluster. They, this primarily helps with the read throughput because usually for most real-time databases, um, you know, you have one write, but then the, the read is distributed to multiple clients. For example, if you have a chat application, right? When, when there are 10 people in the chat, you send one message to it, nine other people need to receive it. So um, for future work, we know that this is kind of like uh, a really like simple, how would I say? Not, not really simple, it's more like we, we did it primarily for our own use. Um, there is no dashboard. So unlike Firebase, uh, Google Cloud, there's no like nice dashboard for you to see metrics. Some dashboard would be nice. Um, we definitely need test cases and documentation, which is usually the last few things most people have. Yeah, and one thing I do know that um, is that we do not currently do not support, support sharding. So if let's say you have multiple Redis clusters, uh, you, you, you would want to enable sharding to basically increase your write throughput if let's say you have a really large pool of users, maybe 100,000 or 1 million, you know, depends. Yeah, so now it's time for the demo. Um, yeah, I'll pass over to Jerry. All right, thanks, James. Uh, so I'm Jerry. Uh, I'm a developer, full stack developer. Um, I actually contribute actively to the local startup scene. Uh, I take part a lot of hackathons in Singapore. Um, some of you may have seen me seen me before. Um, yeah. So basically, today I'm going to talk about like okay, if you are sitting here, maybe you are a front end developer, maybe wondering how am I going to integrate or use this um, on the front end, right? How do I call the Firebase? Or how do I use SD, uh, the Firebase SDK and like call or use Snapcache? So this is um, any like React developers here? Just like show hands. Oh, okay, cool, good. So so I know yeah basically, um, yeah I just did the tutorial like last night or something. <laughs> so this is the demo a demo app that I did in in, in uh, React. Um, yeah, so just to show you guys how um, basically how you how you do do it in your if you are a React developer. I'm sorry, I'm not a Vue.js developer, so I wouldn't know about Vue. Okay, so basically, uh, app.js, all right, you have your props, uh, you, you put your state, right, simple boilerplate code, okay. Uh, actually, it's very simple, right? It's like all your Firebase, S, uh, the SDK all works out of the box. The, the only thing you need to change is like the configuration endpoint, or where you point your database to. Um, you have your um, subscriber, you subscribe to um, you have a value subscriber. There's also the what's the other one where you have like more. I uh, forgot to call it. But these are the value subscriber. Uh, on you mount it. Uh, you add it when you know on component you mount. Just remember to mount it. Um, and then you have a value callback. Basically, when something changes, let's say okay, so this is a do do app, right? Yeah. So we have a list of tasks, and then somebody and you have many people that's trying to add things to this task. Do this list of tasks. Okay. So uh, what happens is somebody else adds a task. Um, it's actually uh, subscribing to the entire collection, so the entire uh, collection is, is actually returned in a snapshot. Uh, you just iterate through your snapshots, and then uh, you set state. This is where you set the state, right? And then your React component will re-render. So pretty basic and very simple. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the only thing you need to do is basically. Basically, we are replacing Firebase with like our own, in like Firebase server, right? So basically, you you just change the database URL to the whatever uh, IP address or whatever uh, port that you you mounted your fire uh, the snap cache on. Okay, the rest of the stuff is, yeah, you can implement it if you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, this is like okay the last piece. 
uh, just make sure um, so you just make sure you have the Firebase SDK as your dependency uh, you download it um, install it um, it's the usual stuff right it's on like the Firebase tutorials initialize the app with the config with the new config and uh, the last part is very important like okay, so this is like where you put it on your database API and then just remember that uh, you have to make sure it's a singleton like you don't initialize it multiple times that's what the try catch that is there for uh, basically Firebase doesn't like it when you try and uh, initialize multiple times yeah and you got it so let's see how this works okay um, enough code um, hold on huh? Right. Okay, so um right, so you're gonna use like two separate browsers to like simulate two different clients, okay? And um Alright, let's try and add some tasks. Uh anyone volunteer some tasks? Like so one of the tasks that I was doing just before I left for this talk was writing a readme for this repo. <laughs> if you go and look at the commits for our repo, uh, I, the readme was just uh, updated like at 5.30 today. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it pops out on the other screen. Yeah, it works. <laughs> this real-time database. Okay, so uh, yeah. Um, essentially, yeah, this is like what we're doing. Like you have sockets, web sockets, subscribing to changes on a database and then... Uh, you have changes on one, it shows up on the other, all your all your other clients. Yeah, and then maybe and maybe another one like um like arranging something for Valentine's Day. <laughs> but yeah, uh so I think that's it, right? Okay. Oh I don't know. How to spell this. Yeah, um so that's the demo. Um yeah. Okay, so any questions? Yeah, so, so just to confirm, you do use the actual security rules in the same format that Firebase uses? Yeah, that's correct. And two, how do you handle uh, the auth, the, the, the fact that you can do authentication with Firebase that's tied to the security? Yeah, so this was built in a time where, sorry, this was built in a time where we weren't using OAuth. Um, I'm not sure what new authentication methods they use. In the past, uh, we were actually use like um, its, uh, its own internal keys. Yeah, so there is no OAuth support at the moment. Yeah, any other questions? Yes. This one is for the Firebase Web Plan SDK, right? Uh, the real time database? Uh, yes. Because there's two, one is also for the, the backend part, the Firebase admin. So will it also work with Firebase admin? Um, I, I, I haven't really used it for quite a while, but um, it doesn't really have like the new stuff that Firebase introduced. Yeah, it's purely um, for the real-time database. I think the SDK we're using, what, what version was it? 5 point, uh, there's a version basically you know, okay. readme, right? Yeah, there's a version that we tested until. I'm not sure if the newer stuff actually works. Yeah, but um, usually I think what we what we like to use this for, for example, like one of the use cases that I actually want to try to use this for uh, home automation because previously my home automation would run off Firebase and would like go over the internet and I find it's quite kind of silly. So if I want to like bring it down into my own, like you know, run it locally, right? There isn't any other way except you know using this. Yeah, and if let's say you want to give a demo that purely runs on your laptop without the internet, you know, this would be another way as well. It's great for hackathons. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh yeah, the repo is. Uh, yeah, this is the repo here. Yeah, at, uh, you can just go to um, snapcastjs.org. Yeah, welcome uh, for contributors. Yeah. Yeah, if anyone like you know, <laughs> if you still use Firebase and you want to go check this out, um, there, there's many things that are not really implemented, uh, you know, completely. So you know, feel free to contribute. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, we are we are not packaging this up as a <laughs> npm package. Yeah, so it's not an npm package yet. So yeah, you have to fork this, uh, but we'll get there, right, someday.
Okay, thank you. Thank you.